they'd all experienced something of the war and they came back and they really wanted to create a pictorial visual language that was entirely different to anything else they had ever come across. And that's why I think we really get this development of a very, very fresh, new, abstract language that is distinctly British and very much inspired by the West Country <coughs> landscape. I think what you find Frank doing is taking a relatively simple topic. I mean, the, you know, the horse and rider is something that goes right back into, you know, into classical antiquity. But taking that subject, giving it a modern uh, feel and a twist, but keeping its, its sort of, I suppose really it's fe that feeling of antiquity and that timeless element. That relationship between man and animal that you find in the horse and rider is something that she explored for many, many years. And obviously it has all sorts of different elements to it because you've got the, the strength and power of the horse, the, the nature of the relationship, and the fact that she chooses to make the rider naked really heightens that kind of vulnerability too. Um, I think the Olympics really helped people to look at what artists have done in Britain. Not actually, not just artists, writers. Um, musicians and artists all together because I think especially in the mid-century all of these fields were intermarried towards each other and what we found last year was people were coming through London for the Olympics and they wanted to see what British artists has, had created. There was, this, there was this very, very strong sense of randomness in there. So you would start with a map of a particular area, which would, you would throw darts at that. You would then go to those locations. And once you were at that location, throw a set square on the ground, and that would randomly find you your area. And then you set about bringing that element of the craft of making into it, because you, you make a perfect reproduction of that area of ground. 